Hi, I've got a question for you. How many people here would say they can draw? <laughs> well, I think we've got about one or two percent of the hands going up. And it's interesting, isn't it? It's a little bit like um, people think of spelling um, or singing. They think, well, you can either do it as you, or you can't. And, but I think you can. Because when people say they can't draw, I think it's more to do with beliefs rather than talent and ability. So I think when you say you can't draw, that's just an illusion. And today I'd like to prove that to you. Now when I say draw, I'm not saying we're all going to draw like Michelangelo. <laughs> we're not going to be painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling. But would you be happy if, by the end of this session, you could draw pictures a little bit like this? Yes. <laughs> or even a little bit like this? Well, actually, there's only two things you need to do to be able to achieve this. One is have an open mind. Are you up for that? Yes. And two, just be prepared to have a go. So grab a pen and a piece of paper. <coughs> okay. So here's how it's going to work. I'll show you the first cartoon we're going to do, so just watch to begin with. Here we go. Just watching. That's going to be our first cartoon. It's a character called Spike. So I'd like you to draw along with me. So I'll draw the first line, you draw, and when you've done that, look up, and I know you're ready for the next line. Okay, here we go. Start with the nose. Now, the eyes, they're like 66s or speech marks. That's it. Next, the mouth, nice big smile. Now, over here, the ear. Next, some spiky hair. Next, put the pen to the left of the mouth. Little line like that. Pen under the ear. Drop a line like that. Pen to the left of the neck. Top of the t-shirt. Line to the left. Line to the right. Just hold your drawings up and show everyone. How are we all doing? <laughs> OK. OK, fantastic. So, it looks like you've just learned to draw one cartoon, <coughs> but you've actually learned more than that. You've learned a sequence that would enable you to draw hundreds and thousands of different cartoons, because we're just going to do little variations on that sequence. Have a go at this. Draw along with me. Nose. Eyes. Smile. That's it. Now some hair. Pen to the left of the mouth. Under the hair. Little V shape for the top. Line to the left. Line to the right. So we've got another character. Let's call her Thelma. <laughs> So we've got Spike and Thelma. Let's try another one. Here we go. Another little variation, getting the idea. Starting with the nose. But this time we'll change the eyes slightly. Look, two circles together like that. That's it. Then two little dots in for the eyes. And this time we'll change the mouth slightly. Watch. Little circle coloured in there. Have a go at that. Next, the ear. Now we'll have some fun with the hair, watch. Some nice curly hair. Then same thing, pen to the left of the mouth. Little line like that. Under the ear, 
drop a line, top of the T-shirt, line to the left, line to the right. I think we'll call him Jeff. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do one more. <laughs> one more go. Here we go. You're getting the idea. So we'll start with a nose again. Notice we're doing little variations. Now we'll change the eyes so we've got them apart and we'll put some little dots in like that. Next, the mouth's slightly different. Let's put a little V-shape like that. Triangle. And a little line across and we'll just colour this little bit in. Now watch this bit carefully. Some hair. Watch. Here we go. A little line like that. Next, a bit more there. And watch, a couple of triangles to make a little bow. Triangle at the bottom, rest of the hair. Pen to the left of the mouth again. You get the idea. Drop a line for the neck. Another V shape. Line to the left, line to the right. There we go. <laughs> Let's call her Pam. <laughs> so you've done... <laughs> so you've done four cartoons. You can have a little rest now. <laughs> Take a rest. You're getting the idea. All we're doing is little variations. We could go on. I'll just demonstrate a couple to you. We could go on all day, couldn't we? You could do someone looking unhappy, a bit like that. Or you could experiment with uh, perhaps... Someone who's, you know, just draw a straight line. Someone looking a bit fed up, or perhaps you could do anything you like, really. Just try things out. Look at this. Little squiggle. There we are. So all sorts of things we can do. Actually, one more that you do. One more idea. This is a great little technique. Have a go at this. People with glasses on, just draw a nose uh, a bit like spikes. Next. Draw some frames, so two circles like that with a little bit in between. Now, just put some dots inside for the eyes like that. Next, the ear, so it's a little bit like we did before. But this time, we'll join up the frames. That's it. Watch this bit. <laughs> and this bit I really like, watch. And then, a little bit there, pencil under the moustache, line down, top of the shirt, left and right. So there we have it. We could carry on, couldn't we? Hopefully we've done enough to convince you that, <coughs> in fact, we can all draw. And not just people here. I've worked with, I'm going to give you three examples of other people who've learned to draw, and, and I actually surprise them too. And I'm going to save the, what I think is my favourite, most surprising <coughs> example until last. The first example is I've worked a lot with children and students in schools. And actually, the little ones, they just draw fine, but when they get to about 15 or 16, most of them think they can't draw. But I've worked with them. I worked this week in a school where I was coaching them on using pictures for memory. And a girl was trying to remember what red blood cells do. And she drew this little picture of a red blood cell carrying a handbag with O2 on it to remind her that the red blood cells carry oxygen to all parts of the body. That was a great one. The other people I've worked with is many adults in all walks of life, and um, particularly in business. And they often will want to make presentations memorable. So again, a quick cartoon or a sketch could be really good for that. And again, most people think they can't draw, but take this example. A couple of wavy lines. Little boat. Could represent, could be a metaphor to represent we're all in this together. So that, if that was just drawn in a presentation, would really stay in the memory, wouldn't it? Yeah. But the third example is you shouldn't have favourites, really, should you? This is my favourite. Have you ever been at a party when someone asks you what you do? I always get a bit sceptical when people ask me that. And this lady said to me, well, I said, well, I do a bit of training and, and I teach people to draw. And she said, would you come along and do some for our group? 
She said, I work with some people, she was a volunteer, a group of people who've suffered strokes. So I said, well, I'm sure I could you know, spare some time for that. So I said I would, and I booked a time in. Have you ever done that? And you get nearer the time, and you think, what have I let myself in for here? <laughs> Will I be able to do it? I thought, what could I, poss what could I do with them, you see? So I, thought, I know, I'll do my cartoon drawing, they'll like that. But then as I got nearer the time, I got more and more apprehensive, because then I was thinking, well, I've worked with children, I've worked with all sorts of adults, I've never worked with a group like this. And it turns out it was all part of a charity called Talk. And this Talk charity is a wonderful charity that helps people who've suffered strokes but have a particular condition known as aphasia. You might have heard of aphasia, sometimes called dysphasia. And the key thing is it affects their ability to communicate. So, for example, they might have trouble reading, writing, speaking, or understanding. And it can be a quite an isolating condition. It can be very, very frustrating uh, and can lead to a loss of confidence. Anyway, so I prepared all this stuff, went to do this, this session for a couple of hours, tea break in the middle, you know, and uh, I got more apprehensive. But actually, I needn't have worried because I'm going to show you now the work that they did. And it was one of the best things I've ever done. I'm going to show you the first slide. And I taught them spike, just like I did for you. And I want you to see the reaction on their faces when they did this. <laughs> what you can see here are two of the stroke recoverers on the left and right, and one of the volunteer helpers in the centre. And each stroke recoverer, there are about 36 in the room um, with volunteers as well, there's one-to-one -one helpers. And you can just see the delight on their faces, can't you? Let's look at another picture. This is a gentleman called David. And he's holding up his picture, and you can tell it was the picture of Spike, can't you? In fact, I think he's drawn Spike even better there. But what I didn't realise until even after the session was that a number of the people in this session, including David, were drawing with their wrong hand. David's stroke meant that it affected the right side of his body, and he drew with his left hand, as many did. Nobody mentioned it to me. Nobody complained. They just got on with it. And it was an inspirational session for me. It was quite a humbling session. One of the best things I felt I've ever done. And at the end of it, I had a lovely email from Dr. Mike Jordan. And he's the chair of the talk group. Happens to be a medical doctor, but he's the chair of the group. And he wrote to me, and, and I'm quoting, he said, our recoverers learned today that they can draw. He said, but more than that, this sort of activity really builds their confidence. So I was happy. He was happy, everyone was happy. They've invited me back again, and I'm, I go in there now about every three or four months. So it's great. So I thought that was a lovely example to share. Fancy one more drawing? Yes. Here we go. Yes. Grab your pens. <coughs> Here we go. Right, I'm going to get you to draw someone that you would recognise. So, start with a big nose. <coughs> a bit like spikes. Next... We'll do some eyes, and you might be thinking, this is also a bit like Spike. Watch the next bit. You're getting warm? There you go. Little line down there. Down here. Little V-shape, line to the left, line to the right. And you've got Albert Einstein. <laughs> so, you've got the pens with you. You've, 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 proved that you can, you've proved that you can draw. You're very welcome to take the pens with you and have a practice at home, even show somebody else. But actually, I'd like to leave you um, with a final thought. When you walked in here today, many of you didn't believe you could draw. And... You know, I've got a question for you about that. How many other beliefs and limiting thoughts do we all carry around with us every day? Beliefs that we could perhaps potentially challenge and think differently about. And if we did challenge those beliefs and think differently about them, apart from drawing, what else would be possible for us all? Thank you very much.